Now, the Bank of England increased interest rates yet again yesterday. A quarter percentage To raise increase. its base rate of interest For again. the 14th time in a row. The 14th rise in For a row. For the 14th time in a row. The property market is taking a turn and I'm seeing more landlords and property investors making terrible financial decisions. However, this year, I'm going to be personally buying a number of properties, more properties than I have ever before. And I know that this year is going to be a big, amazing financial year for me. And I want to explain in this video exactly why I believe that and how I'm going about it. At the point of filming this video, the interest rates have just gone up to 5.25%, the Bank of England base rate. And it's increased by 0.25%. And if you were to read the newspapers and speak to your mate down the pub, you would think that it is the absolute end of the world, but it really isn't. I like to think of interest rates a bit like the ocean, right? So me and my family every single year go to Cornwall for a lovely coastal summer holiday. And every single day you get to see from the balcony where we stay, we stay in this lovely villa-esque building and it's gorgeous. And from the balcony, you can see the tide come up and then you see it come back down. And in the same way, interest rates, they come up and they come down and they vary all the time. They change all the time. Now, when the tide is low, it's a good opportunity for me and other people to explore the coastline. You can venture out further and see what is going on. But what you can't do is get complacent because you've always got to be aware that eventually the tide is going to come back up and I need to be prepared to either retreat back to shore or be prepared to swim. Now, what's happened is the interest rates recently over the past few years have been very, very low for very, very long. And what's happened is we've got investors, we've got landlords who've become complacent. They've over leveraged themselves. They've gone too far out and it's too late so that as the interest rates have risen in the same way that the tide rises, they're unprepared and not able to manage their portfolios, their investments well. In the same way that you'd either have to retreat back to the shore or be prepared to swim, you've got to do the same with your property investments. You've got to work out how you can pull back or be prepared to ride out the waves. So in order to ride out this high interest rate, which in reality, if you look at the past decades, the, few, the past few decades, the interest rates at the moment really aren't that high. They're just a normal rate. But because it's been so low for so long, this feels like a very high interest rates because prices of properties are so high at the moment, it does cause more issues. Now, how do you actually manage to stay afloat in a season like this? Well, I know this sounds a little bit doom and gloom, but if you are someone who owns a property portfolio or you're wondering about whether now is the right time to start investing in property and you're a bit concerned about the interest rates, I just want to explain exactly how I personally am buying a bunch of property this year in a way that means that the interest rates, they don't scare me. I'm not worried that I'm going to financially sink. In fact, I'm very confident that I'm going to financially thrive. And hopefully, after hearing what I have to say, you can too. Now, in order to ride out the high interest, the high interest rates at the moment, I'm going to just explain the least popular option that I'm going to just skim right through. But in reality, it is actually an option. And that is to decrease the amount of lending that you're doing. If you're really concerned about the amount of debt that you have and the interest rates are just piling up, then the reality is you need to work out how you can decrease your costs. One of the biggest costs that you'll have as a business is your interest rates on any loans, any mortgages that you might have across your portfolio. There's a number of ways you can do this. You could switch things to repayment mortgages that might not be financially viable for a lot of people. I know for a few of my friends who have large portfolios, they are seriously leveraged at the moment. It's not concerning them. But what they're starting to do, and it's really a, a last resort, but it's also just a personal preference. What they're doing is they're selling off a, a third of their portfolio and they're using the profits that they're making from those properties to start paying down the debts on the other two thirds of their property, just significantly reducing their costs, increasing their margin so they've got a bit more room to breathe throughout this next period where interest rates are higher. Now, the main thing that I'm currently doing to increase my likelihood of success, and it sounds really, really simple, and I don't want to oversimplify this, but really, if you want to manage your way through this debt, it's either by decreasing the amount of debt or increasing the amount of revenue. Now, this is where I'm focusing. I'm not too concerned with my debt levels because the type of property that I'm investing in has such a huge amount of revenue coming into it 
that I'm not concerned that the costs are going up ever so slightly. So let me give you an example. I know a number of people that are running serviced accommodation businesses where you buy a property, it might be a house, it might be an apartment, and you buy it and you rent it out on a nightly basis on something like Airbnb or booking.com where actually if you were to buy an apartment in uh, just a really simple example, an apartment in the city center of Manchester, you could rent that out for a thousand pounds per month on an AST contract to a standard tenant. Alternatively, you could rent it out for 100, 150 pounds per night and you could make 3,000, 4,500 pounds with 100% occupancy. Obviously, you'd need to work out the occupancy rates and the other costs involved, but you're increasing your revenue. And if you're able to do that, then your margin between your costs and your revenue increase and it just gets further and further away and you increase your likelihood of success. Now for me, the way that I'm currently investing at the moment, I'm joint venturing with a number of different people. I'm doing flips and I'm also doing HMO purchases. Now one of the things that I'm doing to really increase the revenue on my HMO portfolio side of things is that I'm buying HMOs and I'm renting them out to social housing. So for anyone who doesn't know, HMO is a house of multiple occupation. You buy a house that's a four bedroom house, you convert it into a five or six bedroom house and you rent it out room by room to students, to professional tenants, someone like that. And again, you are increasing your rent rather than renting out a house for a thousand pounds a month, you're renting each room and you're renting, you know, four, five, six rooms for 400, 500 pounds per month per room. So you're increasing your amount of revenue coming into your properties. One of the things that I'm doing to, again, help this grow in a way that is much less risky is I'm renting out to social housing providers, registered providers or, or housing associations. People refer to it as different things, but what we're doing is we are taking on a property and we're renting it to a charity or a local council or something that is government backed where they will be leasing it off of us, not renting it off of us. They'll be leasing it on essentially what's close to an FRI lease, a fully repaired and insured lease. This means that they will take it on. We don't have to pay for any management. We don't have to pay for any void periods if there's no tenants in there. We don't have to pay for any maintenance costs. And most importantly, when it comes to HMOs is I'm not paying for the bills as well, because that is a huge cost, especially at the moment and has been over the past year for HMO owners is that bills have increased gas electric costs have gone through the roof and so that has been eaten into a lot of people's costs if you don't have to pay that then the amount of profit that you make significantly increases now typically with housing associations social housing sorts of contracts you do get less per property but your costs are so significantly reduced that your profit margin is the same if not slightly more and it's much more hands-off so for me it's an incredible property strategy and investment strategy that I'm investing into heavily in 2023. And if you are thinking about getting into property, I would suggest really looking into it because it is a fantastic investment model. It's a great way to scale up your portfolio in a much more passive way, in a way that also increases your revenue. So if you want to increase your revenue, if you're buying properties and you want to increase your revenue, think about service accommodation, think about HMOs, whether it be to students, professionals or whether it's to a social housing provider if you want to have a conversation with me about doing joint ventures and working together on building up a hmo portfolio then i'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you about that now i'm also flipping houses this is another thing that you can do to make money in a time where interest rates are high buying properties significantly below market value you know the profit is in the purchase if you can buy a house that's worth 150,000, you you're buying it for 120 regardless of what you do to it you can sell it and make a profit you are buying houses renovating them and then flipping them on selling them on for a profit that is another way that you can make money in this current market the only thing i would say is because of the interest rates you will be much more limited by your end buyer so you need to be aware that if you're going to be buying something renovating it and selling it in six months the market may have dipped by then. So just make sure you've got a really strong contingency in your profit margin. There's a really nice, strong profit margin there so that if you do have to eat into it, it's not that you're losing money, you're just making a bit less than you thought in the first place. The other thing you can do in this current market is lease option agreements, purchase lease options. This is where you agree to take full control over a property and you will rent it off of a landlord. You'll rent it off of a homeowner and you'll put a tenant in there Kind of turn it into HMO, do whatever you want to it to increase the revenue. 
make as much money as you can you lease it off of the landlord you lease it off the homeowner for a period that you agree with them so it might be a year it might be five years it might be 10 years whatever you agree with the owner and then you agree in advance what you're going to pay for it at the end of that term in the same way that a lot of people buy cars these days so it might be that you say to somebody let's say someone's asking for 150,000 pounds I can't pay that either I pay 120 for it or I pay 160 but I'll pay that 160 in seven years time in the meantime I'll take it off of you I'll lease it from you so you get your your mortgage paid you get your your rent coming in but you don't have to worry about the management of it and you can rent it out as a HMO or service accommodation. Again, doing something that increases the revenue that comes in in a way that means that you still make profit in those seven years. And it means that as inflation goes up, as the property prices go up, that property will increase in value and you'll be able to buy it again at a significantly discounted rate of what it would be worth in seven years time. Now, I know it sounds like a really simple video, this whole concept of actually how do you manage the high interest rates either decrease your lending or increase your revenue but it's a it's a concept that people don't seem to be getting their heads around people are panicking at the moment and if you are a portfolio landlord if you have individual single lets that you're thinking right now we're losing money on them every single month and you want to work out how you can increase your revenue or work out how you can turn it into a hmo or rent it to a social housing provider or turn it into an airbnb whatever it is if you need help with that, feel free to reach out. I'll put a link in the description where you can get in touch with me and my team. I'd be more than happy to help you out if you are struggling to navigate the current market with the current interest rates. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, make sure that you hit the like button and comment any questions that you have below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification as well because I don't want you to miss any uploads. We've got loads of amazing podcasts coming up and I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.